Okay, everybody, welcome to the safe haven. Uh, this is our AMA session right here we're having with E&E. &E. Remember, nothing you hear is financial advice at all. We're just here to help you make the best investment decision possible by giving you the knowledge and insight of the project and team that you may not have otherwise been able to get if you weren't in the AMA. So E&E &E is a really unique project. I like what they've got going on. And right now we're going to jump into the AMA and I'm going to start asking questions from their... Um, from their owner Jess here and yeah let's go ahead and jump into it so without further ado Jess why don't you tell us about how you got into this space thanks Stacey um so as you said I'm Jess um I'm the owner of e, &E and I've been in crypto um and stocks for about seven years um I became a full-time trader in crypto I guess about uh four years ago now and I was mostly just trading um, top, you know, the top coins, um, Bitcoin, then Ethereum um, trading, not holding, unfortunately. And um, top 20, you know, 50, say, coins tokens over time. And then um, started, you know, watching some YouTube videos, found a new YouTuber um, around the safe moon explosion time. and um, joined his telegram. He was starting a community and um, started speaking with him, uh, learning about micro caps and eventually started vetting projects for him. Um, invested in my first micro cap, learned a lot through that experience and then uh, found my way to SGO and that community. Um, I did some volunteer work as a copywriter for them and became an admin and kind of worked my way up to basically every position in that group and joined their core team and worked in their ecosystem as a volunteer um, and on the core team for about two years and um, then resigned from that that team in October. And that's what led me here. Got you. So that's a really good ride. I like hearing stories like that, man, because it just it makes it makes you seem more legitimate and it shows that you are more legitimate when you have an actual real thorough backstory. So I really enjoy that. So what made you want to create e, &E? before we talk about what it is, what made you want to create a project in the first place? Sure. So when, when we um, resigned from, or when I resigned from SGO, um, it was not um, that ecosystem kind of, fell apart, to be frank. Um, I won't go into that because that's not not my story to tell on AMA. But, um, you know, a lot of investors lost a lot, um, you know, and, and we wanted to do something to help those investors. Um, you know, we were, we were a very close-knit community, um, especially, you know, those that were there till the very end. And, you um, it, it was very heartbreaking to see some of the things that they went through. We all went through a lot together over the course of that two years. And so myself and two other core team members actually created the aftermath, um, which is a project that's still in development. Um, but there is a lot of development going on and that needs to go on for that DeFi project. Um, and the market conditions need to change a bit before it launches so in in waiting for that um, and in speaking to a lot of our community members, we wanted to do something else. And that is what eventually led us to E&E. &E. Um, you know, we we recognize that the space is full of of memes and um, th that's a really big part of the BSC space. But it's, you know, typically those memes are pump and nubs. You know, they don't have longevity. They they claim that they're going to have utility or maybe they have utility in the form of staking, but let's, let's be honest. Um, basically everyone has staking now, you know, it, it's, it's readily available. You don't even have to, you know, really build a platform to do it. You can do it in other places. Um, and so, you know, we, we started thinking about, you know, what can we really do um, to provide longevity, but also, you know, have, have this, capture on this uh, or capitalize on this, you know, meme aspect that draws the attention in this space. And so um, we also, you know, wanted to, to do something different in the form of, of a female led team. So Allie, who was also on the core team of SGO, 
um, who is also a co-owner in the aftermath, we started talking about it and we got with Chris, who was an admin um, in the previous ecosystem. And, you know, we wanted to do this, this female led team together. Um, and, and this is what came about from it. That's what's up. Good work. Good work. I like that. So what is E&E? So e is, um, it's a hybrid um, BEP20 token and NFT project that pays out BUSD rewards just for holding. You know, it kind of goes back to the days of, of reflections, but not in the form of um, the token itself. Um, it pays out BUSD. Well, why BUSD? Because, um, you know, you it, it's passive um, and it's stable. So we're in a bear market. Why not, you know? Um, I can I can get more into that later, but so that's you know the the hybrid um, token and NFT project, and um, in in doing that, we um, provide those BUSD rewards for for both through the contract, and then we're also building utility um, that is important in the DeFi space and that will bring um, revenue back to the project. Um, and we have a unique um, aspect to our contract that kind of helps solve a problem to that that oversaturated meme and um, you know scam, I guess you could say, um, aspect that plagues the BSC space. In that we're able to change the name of our contract at any time, so we can change themes um, of our token to stay relevant, stay um, on trend. You know, it, it's really neat in that aspect. We're actually on the fifth name and trend now. So we can always be fresh. We can attract new people, um, but we're building out real utility as well to be able to keep that same contract without migrating so that the chart can continue on and holders, you know, don't lose out. All righty, I got you. Now, this is where we start to get just a little bit deeper and the questions become harder. Are you ready? Hey, bring it on. Yeah, you better say bring it on. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyways, yeah. So when it comes to creating a project like this, obviously it's focused on community. So what is it about your community that, what, let me reword that differently. What is it about the way you build a community that we can trust that you can make this project successful in the long run? What is it about your community building skills that we can trust will make it successful in the long run? Um, I think first and foremost is that I'm I'm very open and honest and transparent with my community. Um, you know, I did mention that that kind of the core of our community, we've been together a really long time. And so there is a level of trust there that probably um, doesn't exist you know, with a lot of people in the space, um, most of, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not per se doxxed on our website, but a lot of, a lot of the people through the previous projects, like they're, they're, uh, friends with me on my LinkedIn, you know, they know my background, they know, you know, where I am, it's my real LinkedIn, um, you know, all of my information, but more than that, I mean, I'm, I'm just very transparent. I'm very open. I'm very honest about what we're doing. Um, I'm not going to to tell you something just because it's what you want to hear. It it may be the opposite of what you want to hear, but um, it is 100%, you know, what we're doing and the direction we're going. And, um, you know, I, I've just, that's who I am. That is, um, and my community ex accepts that. You know, they accept and they recognize that I'm going to be upfront with them. Um, I'm always going to to give them that information and they respect that. And um, I respect them. You know, we we have an open line of communication. Um, we welcome ideas. We welcome, um, you know, any and all um, ideas from the community because we're not dictators, um, we we welcome, you know, that doesn't mean that necessarily every idea is going to be implemented, 
but we at least recognize that the community um, has input and a lot of great decisions and a lot of great suggestions come from the community. And we're frequently able to take those and, you know, maybe tweak them or, um, you know, implement them in some form um, to better the project. Got you. And what would you say the biggest competitive advantage that your project has over others in this category? Um, so I think that just, you know, if, if you take the time to come to our telegram to, um, to look at our community and um, see, see how active they are, um, just, you know, maybe not not every second of every day, but day in and day out, see how active they are, see how um, willing they are to help everyone, see how selfless they are and altruistic in terms of giving up their own um, tokens for promotions to bring in other people. Um, if I open up, you know, if I go in and do an unannounced voice chat in my own community, how many people come on, you know, to listen, um, to offer suggestion, help and advice to those, you know, you'll see that, that, that is, um, that it works. You know, you'll see that, that it's the community who is really the heart and soul of e and &E. I mean, obviously you don't see that, that type of community everywhere and we have less than 200 holders. So, you know, that is, that's a huge advantage when you have that type of community who comes together to frequently um, promote the project and give up their own um, tokens that, you know, they've put their money in, they're putting their time into to promote the project. Um, you know, you can see for yourself like that it works. Um, I mean, that, that in and of itself is a huge advantage. Perfect answer. Wonderful. And how would you say, that you were able to bring those types of people into your project? And how can you continue to bring those types of people in your project? So, you know, we were, we were fortunate to start out initially with a small group of, of like-minded people. Um, we do have a community, um, I won't mention the name, but we, we have a, a community that is open Open, that is, you know, an educational type community. It's not a project. It's just an open community where anyone can come. They can, you know, show projects. They can learn and things of that nature. So we have that. And then we, we have the community, you know, that was part of um, the ecosystem that I was a core team member of. So we had a small close knit group to begin with. And so um, obviously, you know, not, not all of them came, especially initially. But we started out with that that small group and, you know, we told them what our plans were. You know, we told them this is this is not likely to moon initially. We're not going to go out and spend a bunch of money marketing. We're not going to go initially. We're not going to go out and promote this coin. It's not going to be a pump and dump. What we want are the right people here who believe in the vision, who believe in what we're building. We want to build a solid floor with solid people who are like minded. So we did that. We continued to bring people in. The community continued to use organic growth to bring in, you know, people that were that they knew who were like-minded to them, who would share that same vision. Is everybody going to be that way? Of course not. There's always going to be, you know, people who come in and leave, you know, and we recognize that, and that's okay. That's that's part of that's part of the game. That's part of crypto, but. You know, if for every five people that come in to the telegram or every 10 people or every 20 people, you can get one person who listens to the vision and buys into it just, you know, and it may take time and, and understands what you're building and understands what you're doing. And if they stay there long enough, you know, that's the goal. The goal is, is that if they come into the telegram, you know, we're not asking you to buy our token right away. I would never ask anybody that, you know, education is so important in this space and understanding what you're buying before you buy it, not just, you know, freely, um, you know, blindly buying into something. 
But, you know, I would ask anybody, get educated first. So come into our Telegram, learn what we're about, you know, see what our mission is, see what our community is about, learn what we're doing. And then, you know, if we can get one of those people to understand that, understand our mission, understand what we're doing. And, you know, it typically happens, you get that, you know, it, it may be one in 20, it may be one in 25, but you get that, that one person um, who does that. And then you've got, you've got a holder, you know, you don't just have that person in for the quick fix. You've got that holder and that's where your real growth comes from. Understood. Good. Uh, so let's go over the tokenomics. Uh, let's talk about what the tokenomics are and why they are what they are. Sure. So uh, we originally launched with a 420 million market cap. And um, 420 was the number that we chose um, because we were very memey and we launched um under the name Elon's Naughty Elves. So 420 was a naughty number. It was just kind of chosen that way. No no specific reason. We didn't want it to be like a billions or trillions, you know, number. So so we went with 420 million. Um, we did not allocate any um, specific uh, supply to marketing or um, anything like that because we didn't want to use tokens to pay for um, influencers or marketing that was something that we definitely didn't want to do because we wanted to ensure that we weren't throwing um, large large percentages of tokens out there to be dumped um you know not saying necessarily that that marketers would do that but you know it, it's always a possibility um you know if if you don't have a strong relationship or if they you know are not completely bought into your vision so we didn't want to do that. So um, we're very um, peculiar with um, people that we we give out um, tokens to uh, in terms of development or marketing and things of that nature. So um, we didn't allot, you know, a portion for marketing. Instead, um, when we when we issued our Genesis NFTs, which actually came before our token launch we used a very large portion of those sales to buy back into the token. And um, about half of those were burned and then about half of them were reserved for um, promos and things of that nature. And, and those tokens are actually sitting in the dev wallet, but um, you know, they were reserved for things of that nature so that they're actually bought tokens. They're not um, just tokens that were minted on initial supply. And um, the tax structure on our token is we did um, 6%. Uh, we also have no team allotments. So we, we didn't do like a 5% for the team or for admins or anything like that. Um, everybody bought their tokens. So um, we have our tax structure is currently 6% and 12% out. When we launched um, this contract, I believe we had 21% out for the first day and then we lowered it to 12%. And um, we can still change that function. It's not, the contract is not renounced. And part of that reason is because we need to be able to change our name, but we also eventually want to lower that sell tax even more, um, but we're not at that point yet. So of, of the 6% buys, 12% sell, um, the sell is double the buy exactly in proportions. 35.25% um, goes to liquidity. 24% goes to BUSD rewards for all holders. 18.25% um, goes to boosted rewards for NFT holders. 11.25% for marketing. 11.25% for development. Um, that's recently changed. We actually had more going to our liquidity and less to our marketing and development um, because the, the liquidity ratio was so low. So it's grown a little bit. Um, so we've actually pulled um, not all back into it, but we've actually changed those ratios a little bit. So we still have over a third going to liquidity, um, but we've also pulled a little bit more back um, than what we had not too long ago. Understood. That's really good. And tell us about the uh, the promos that you guys have. Tell us about that. Um, so we... There's always, you know, our name right now is is um, 
shamrocks and shenanigans and we chose that because there's always some crazy shenanigans going on in our telegram um there's you can almost always catch some kind of promo who knows what it might be um the one that we have currently is let's see i know that we have i know that we have one for um any anyone if you bring a friend wait a minute okay if you bring a friend um and they purchase in the project then you receive a 100% match of their tokens there are um stipulations to that where um you know there's a holding period and there's a way that the tokens are paid out um to help protect the project a bit but um essentially if if you bring in a holder you're rewarded for that. So if they buy BNB worth of tokens, you get that match. Um, if it's 10,000 tokens, you get 10,000 tokens too. So that's just a way that, um, you know, you can be rewarded for, for bringing new people into the project where you don't have to buy personally. You know, we offer different promos where sometimes, you know, you know, you might get a match. We do buy trains. We offer, you know, all kinds of different things. Chris, our community manager, she's excellent at coming up with different games and and things um to keep the chat interactive and um there's almost always um something going on where you can earn tokens and not just necessarily have to buy into the project understood and there's also um we're also halfway through the 70 the the 3x buy promo so do you guys do promotions for every time a new um so do you guys do a new promotion at the beginning of every month when there's a holiday in that month? Like last month was Valentine's. This is St. Nick's. Uh, April, April. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. March is going to be um, it's going to be St. Patrick's, and then in April it's going to be um, it's going to be Easter. So do you guys do um a new type of promo every month. How does that work? Um. We, we will change themes after St. Patrick's Day. And um, every time we, we change themes, um, we tend, tend to, to run a promotion. Yes. Um, right around theme change and then running up to um, the actual, you know, whatever the, the title of the theme itself is. Um, there tends to be something, you know, pretty big to go along with that. Um, regardless of, of what it might be. Um, I don't know at this time. I mean, I know what the new theme's going to be as far as the promotion. Um, you know, I won't say right now what that is, but um, yeah, like there's always, always something. We're always thinking ahead. Um, we already know what the next theme will be. Um, we have a V2 website coming out um, on the 18th of March, which will be, you know, the day after St. Patrick's Day. So every, um, when the next theme changes, that website will be released also. Along with a new promo. Yeah, that, that sounds good. So I just want everybody, I want to take a moment, you know, just to kind of give Jess her flowers. She's being very cooperative, very honest, very direct. I haven't seen any signs that she's shying away or trying to run from any questions I'm asking her. No matter how... Um, simple or how difficult the question may be to answer she always comes towards it you know and so that's something that's definitely admirable that we that we really like to see here you know um but let's talk some about the marketing side so tell us your marketing strategy for the project so you know as i mentioned earlier um we we've really relied on organic growth up to this point um because the thing that was the most important to us starting out was creating a very solid floor um, so we've not, we've done extremely little paid marketing. Um, when we first launched, um, I think we did in the first week, like two paid calls and they were, were very, very, um, you know, they were not very, very, but they were smaller, smaller groups, um, lower level. So we did that and we did, uh, you know, I've, I've just started doing, um, AMAs, I guess in the past week and a half, um now maybe close to two weeks uh my first one um was was with buck a, 
a couple of weeks ago and that was really my first one and and that's the biggest group that I've done one in um up till now with you guys um it, it's only been smaller groups so um just kind of starting out that marketing kick um along with our v2 website um that'll be coming out we've got um some major utility that's going to drop on that website and along with that um we have um we'll be kicking off some major marketing to bring awareness to that utility not only in the bsc but in the greater DeFi space as a whole because it will actually um, be targeted to all of DeFi for the most part um not just the bsc and it will bring revenue back into the project um, in the forms of buybacks and burns. So it will be um, very useful to the space as a whole. And of course, um, through the website, you know, it will, people will come to it, hopefully to use it and um, generate that revenue, but also learn about the project and, and buy into it as well. Got you. Yeah, I like your um, marketing approach. And why are you taking this specific approach? Because what you said is different from what we're used to hearing. You know, um, I've been in this space a long time now. Um, I've seen a lot. Um, in addition, you know, to being on on the core team um, of that previous ecosystem, um, I've, I've been a marketing advisor um, to several other projects that have launched. And um you know, we didn't do a pre-sell, so I didn't have to worry about, you know, that aspect of marketing because I, I wasn't trying to fill a pre-sell. Um, you know, if I was, perhaps I, I might have done, you know, some things a little differently in the beginning. But since I didn't have to worry about that, um, and I did have, you know, somewhat of a solid community initially, um, you know, I didn't have that worry. The other side was, you know, I'm not here to farm wallets. Like I, I'm not, um, I don't have a big percent going to marketing. Um, you know, it was previously 7.5%. It's 11.2% now, but a lot of even that marketing money has been used for buybacks and burns, um, or it's been used um, for to buy back tokens that were then used for promotions. So it's, you know, we're not, we're not here to, to farm like you see a lot of um, projects that launch in this space. Um, and we're not here to pump and dump. So, you know, creating a solid floor to hold, hold the level, I think is just an extremely important strategy. And you're not going to get that if you start out, um, with people that that don't know you that don't know your mission and that don't buy into your to your vision um i firmly believe that you know it, it's you see it time and time again in this space um you see it you know with pre-sales if you if you you can have pre-sales and you can you can do that pre-launch um, marketing or that that marketing at initial launch if you don't have connections in the space or if you don't have people you know that you can can grow with, but it's very hard at that point to not get people to dump your token when they make gains. So, um, you know, if you're starting at such a low cap, you know, we launched this contract at a 2520 market cap. So 2,520. Um, at our all time high, the fully diluted market cap was 6.2 million. So, I mean, it, literally insane gains. So if if the people that that were here early had not bought into the vision, had not vaulted or burned their tokens, um, you know, our chart would have dumped. I mean, they would have taken profit. It was over a 1,000 X. So, you know, you just have to be very strategic in what you're doing and um, understanding that, you know, when when we say that we're building this, you know, they know that we're building it. And they know that there's so much more to come, not just that we have this roadmap and it's there for looks and, um, you know, it'll be abandoned. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much what makes a project really go for people who don't understand is the community and the team. That's where everything spawns from. Everything spawns from the team and from the community. If you have a solid team and a solid community, that's going to make it go. Utility is good, but if you don't have the right team behind it, it's not going to work. 
you know, concept is good, but if you don't have a supportive community that loves it and is excited about it, it's not going to work. You've never seen a project go big without a strong community and team. It just doesn't happen that way. And if it did go big, it went big for two days and died off and no one cares about it anymore. But um, like I said, these are the types of things that you guys want to be looking for. Everything that she's saying right here, you know, uh, I really appreciate what she's doing with the project. And, you know, you mentioned that you had a lot of connections and people holding down the floor for you. So tell us about some of those people. Have you had any previous successes in crypto that you've brought people from? And, you know, give us more details about who's behind this. Who else is on the team? Um, so, um, you know, the, the greater team, um, let's see. Well, I'm very fortunate. I guess I could say that um, in the greater team, you know, I've got um, got a partnership with um, with with another token that that's kind of launched as a meme token, but in the baby cults ecosystem, um, and and the guys on that team um, have been um, admins and mods in in three or four projects that have hit you know 100 million market caps during the last bull run. And so, you know, they know a lot of people as well. And I'm actually on the core team of that project to um, to be completely transparent. So, you know, together we're actually building out a full suite of DeFi tools um, that will be uh, front facing on Pulse Chain after it launches. Um, and just, you know, the the owner of that project um, has a lot of connections on Pulse Chain itself. But then myself, you know, through um, through the connections that I've made, um, you know, SGO, when it launched, um, had insane hype. And obviously, you know, we had a well group. And um, one of the things that, you know, I always tried to do, which is what I try to do now, is just, you know, be honest and keep my integrity. And unfortunately, through the collapse of that ecosystem, you know, so, you know, we obviously lost, you know, some people, some people left, left the, the industry as a whole, but um, I'm really fortunate that I had, you know, built amazing relationships with people, with partners, um, with, you know, holders in our ecosystem. And, you know, those people have shown tremendous support in, in our project now. And, you know, those are the people that, that came with us and that are holding down our floor um, holders in our ecosystem people that were not in our ecosystem, but said, you know, you've always been, you know, 100% transparent. You've always been so helpful. And, you know, I'm going to be here. Um, Frank at XTC, I mean, he's been with me since day zero supporting. Um, I only just recently met met Buck through through Mike from Dream Calls. And I mean, they've, they've been amazing. And that's actually how I, um, Buck is actually how, you know, I wound up doing the AMA with you guys. Um, but the support that I've had in the greater space has just been um, tremendous. Like I, I can't um, even express my gratitude for the the support that I've had um, in the space as a whole. Yeah, great answer. Great answer. It was a good answer. So, I mean, I think it's a dope project. I think it's really good. Um, there's a good amount of hands up. So evidently the community thinks the same thing, but you know, that's all I'm going to ask right now, you know, but you did a wonderful job. Um, great answers to questions and everything. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let the community start asking questions. Oh, DC, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Yeah. So I just had one of um, my holders DM me um, a few moments ago and he just sent um, 10,000 e and &E tokens to, uh, to me. He would like to do four giveaways of 2,500 tokens apiece um, to four random members who are in the chat and who are also in, um, you know, they must join the e, e chat, but to four random members of uh, the AMA, if that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. And y'all need to be buying this too. Y'all do, because there are some very generous people who are constantly giving away money to their community. And y'all are always talking about, hey, when you give away and, oh, I was supposed to do this or I want this and I want that. And you called my name. Well, guys, look, they give away a lot of money 
they do a lot of buy promos where you can buy in and they will send you double the amount, right? They will send you double the amount that you bought. They will send you triple the amount that you bought, okay? So I don't want to hear anybody, if you're not buying this token, I don't want to hear anyone complain about how, oh, I can't find good plays. Oh, I can't make money. When you literally have an opportunity, like I can read it off right here. Give me a second. All right. All right. Uh, 3X buy promo. Must hold for 72 hours to receive your first pal, which will be 0.5X. Every 24 hours after that, if you're still holding, you receive an additional 0.5X for the next five days until your full 3X is fully paid. Look at that. They just pretty much help their community out like that. So all I'm saying is, is y'all should be buying this with how generous they are. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. This is a solid project. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get to the questions. Let me unmute uh, Victor. All right, Victor, go ahead, man. Go ahead and ask it. Can you hear me? Go ahead and ask a question, Victor. Um, Telegram keeps kicking me out. Um, but I'll just go straight to my question. Um, Jess, you did um, you did um, talk a lot about um, community and how um, you have the community in mind in pushing this project. So, and I've been on um, in the NA group chat for almost a week now. And I've seen how um, interactive the session between team and the community members have been. And I must commend you on that. Um, but I have a question regarding why Son. Uh, we lost you, Victor. Yeah, you did say on the website that, um, that you'd be providing like an educational platform to um, probably educate um, um, lots of investors in the space. So you didn't touch much on that. So I don't know if you could shed more light on that. I would be happy to. So when I mentioned that, um, you know, we're building that full suite of um, DeFi tools with that partner ecosystem, um, one of the things that we'll be building um, is, is that interactive education platform. And it's really unique in the sense, um, first, and, first of all, I have a background, I have a crazy background, but one of the one of the parts of my background um, is in adult and secondary education. I was a college professor for um, about seven to nine years, and um, after that, I, I taught high school and I was a coach as well. Um, and then I've been to law school in the U.S. also. So um, I have I have a lot of um, time spent in curriculum development and in teaching as well. So. One of the things that we'll be building is like a, a interactive uh, education platform where anybody can go and learn more about um, crypto in general, DeFi, Web3, um, the NFT space, you know, whatever um, topic or all of the topics, you know, that they want to learn about. And um, it'll be a learn to earn platform. One of the things that, that we're building after our cross-chain token swap is we'll be building um, out a cross-chain NFT marketplace. And so one of the cool things about that interactive education platform is, you know, it'll be short, interactive learning modules that, um, you know, will keep your attention and they'll be short so that it won't be like sitting in like some long classroom where, you know, you're being lectured, um, where you'll be able to learn about the space 
um, on your own, you know, time. And once you're, once you've completed a module, um, you know, and, and passed it, I guess you could say, you'll be able to, to possibly, you know, mint an NFT, but it won't just be like a useless NFT, like the other NFTs in our ecosystem, it'll have utility with it. So you'll either be able to, you know, earn with that NFT or, you know, perhaps be able to trade it in for something else, but it will have utility with it. So it'll actually have some value to it. Um, so we're rewarding you for learning about the space, which is extremely important, um, you know, for investors. Awesome answers, awesome answers. And lastly, um, in regards to um, the swap and the aggregator you spoke about, um, when should investors expect um, um, for it to go live? Um, I haven't given a date, but um, I will say that it will be out um, very soon, much sooner. You know, when I first mentioned it, we talked about um, a lot of that utility not not being ready till like mid year, and that definitely will not be the case. Um, <clears throat> the custom swap will be ready um, very soon. I'll just say that it'll be ready very soon. All right. Um, thank you for your answers. And um, it's awesome to see you in the Safe Heaven community. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm, the reason I'm not putting a date, let me let me say, the reason I'm not putting a date on it is because, you know, we we often see people um, over-promise and under-deliver in this space. Um, they, they're not able to meet deadlines. And, you know, with tech integration, um, there can always be, you know, things that, that go wrong. And one of the things that, you know, we said from the get-go that we were not going to do is um, over-promise and under-deliver. Um, it's one of the reasons why our roadmap is a little vague. It, granted, it, it will not be so vague on the, the V2 website. It will be much more in-depth, um, as well as there'll be a proper white paper. But, um, you know, I'm very much of an under-promise, over-deliver person. Um, so that that's why I'm not giving a set date on that. But it, it will be soon. All righty. Um, fingers crossed on that. All right. Thanks, DC, for the opportunity, man. Yeah, you're welcome, bud. I also got a question, too. Um, I noticed that when the chart goes up, it goes up consistently and when the chart goes down it only goes down for between three and five days at the worst at the worst five days but usually around three days and it pumps back up again is there some sort of like is there like some type of special buy me buyback mechanism you guys have or something like that what's going on with that can you explain that there's not um it you know <laughs> I it's just a pattern that has happened and, and I don't know exactly um, what it is, but I've noticed that as well. And, and I think honestly um, what it is, is just that um, some of the, the people that perhaps have bought in, you know, who maybe weren't here for the long term, just um, that's the amount of time that it's kind of taken to shake them out. And then the community maybe recognizes that, that um, because we do have a lot of very solid investors in our community um, that are very educated about the space. You know, we're, as I mentioned, I'm very big on education. And so I think a lot of them are just able to recognize that, you know, perhaps there, there's a lot of selling going on and it, there may be some more. So it may not be the best time to buy back right now, but they're able to see that that selling is now tapering off. So it's probably the right time to buy back because it's probably the bottom of the dip. Yeah, I was about to say, because I was I was looking at that chart the other day and I noticed that the biggest dip y'all have had only lasted five days. On average, the dips only last three days. We're on our fifth day and it's a red candle. But if you look at the candlesticks every single day, the buy pre the sell pressure loses more and more momentum um so it may or may not be a good time to um buy in right now you know i'm not gonna tell nobody what to do you know i tried to do that but 
Yeah, you're you're right though. And we're not just making this up and saying, oh, this might be a good time to buy it because it's our project. Like, no, I'm saying it because actually historically, this is what's been going on and this is what's happening. So uh yeah, I just want to touch on that. Anyways, let's go to Sue J. Let's see Sue J. All right, Superman, go ahead and ask the question. Hey, DC. Hey man, what's up, dude? Hey, doing good. Hey, Jess. Um, hope I'm audible. Can hear you. How are you doing? Oh, okay. I- I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, wonderful to see a uh, 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 women core team. Uh, not many of that out there. So definitely needed. Um, my questions, um, I had a couple of questions, uh, if that's okay. So the first one is with the mm-hmm. theme, right? Very, inter- very interesting concept uh, with the, the changing themes. Um, what I wanted to know is um, how uh, do you decide on which theme you're going to go with next? It, does the community have any say in it? And also, do you want to like capture uh, teams from across the globe, or is this going to be more of an American thing? Like you have different, you know, uh, Asian festivals, you have uh, festivals in the Arab world. Uh, do you kind of plan to capture all of that or is it more of a American festivals only? Um, yeah, sure. So um, thus far, um, we have not at, had the community's input in what the next theme will be. Um, that may change in the future, but for now, we, um, as the core team, have decided um, what that's going to be. Um, but in terms of the, the second part of that question, we do like to actually, one thing that we do um, with the community is, is it's really fun to watch them try to guess what the next theme might be. So that that's one mm-hmm. thing that the community does. And it's always a lot of fun um, to see, like, what they think it might be. Um, but... We do try to capitalize on different themes um, internationally. For example, um, you know, we originally launched um, as, as Elon's Naughty Elves. Um, so that was, you know, yes, American, but also obviously Elon is recognized globally in the crypto sphere. But um, right after that, we did just a general New Year's theme, um, recognizing, you know, from December 31st to January 1st, just the traditional um calendar New Year's. But right after that, we switched to a lunar New Year's theme and we were in a 2023 year of the rabbit. So we did that in capitalizing on those um, Eastern countries that that still celebrate a lunar calendar. Um, Unfortunately, this year that did not include Vietnam because they did not do year of the rabbit um, like China did and some other countries, but um, typically in other years, obviously that would as well. But, um, you know, then we did, we did Valentine's um, and then also now um, St. Patrick's Day, which is, is celebrated in the States, very big and in Western society, but obviously is an Irish um, holiday. But um, the core team, yes, I'm in the U.S. and Chris is in Canada, but Allie is actually in Australia. Um, so we do actually try to look at different things, um, throughout the world, not only in the U S. Okay. That's wonderful to know. Um, so, uh, uh, the second thing was a lot of interesting concepts with your project. The, the, the second thing I wanted to kind of, uh, touch on is the vault, right? Uh, now I have seen many projects that do have, uh, a community burning event or community burning mechanism where people send their tokens just to support the project. But what I see interesting with your project is the community ended up sending 52.5% off the entire supply to that burn address. And then you added another 12.5% from the dev wallet, bringing it to a total of 65%. Um, that it's interesting as well as mind boggling. I mean, did the community actually per- purchase 52.5% of the supply and then decided to burn it? Uh, or was this before launch um, or, and, and done by the private investors or people from the team? 
and also uh, kind of associated with that, you do also have mentioned that you have the ability to mint new tokens. So how does that play into burning and at the same time, the, the possibility of minting new tokens when required? Is there a cap on how many you can mint when, if you do decide to do so? Um, actually, we do not have a mint function. Um, we, we minted 420 at launch and that's it. We don't have a mint function. So 420 was the max supply. We can't mint more. Um, I thought I read it somewhere, but I might, I might be wrong. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. No, no, no. Yeah, no. But we, we don't have a mint function. You can go into our contract, look at the functions. Um, we cannot mint more E&E. Um, the 420 oh, okay. was, was all that there was. Um, as far as the vault goes, so yes, um, the tokens that, that were sent by the community were purchase tokens. Um, if you go through the contract, um, you may see that some holders were airdropped. And that's because this was actually a relaunch. Um, the original contract was open for three days. And then um, some of you may or may not know, but right around Christmas time, there was um, like a fake eth remove bot that um, was added to some telegram groups and it was a scam. And it drained um, through that scam, the owners of the bot um, were able to, to go in and um, scam people into sending tokens to them uh, in the guise of, um, you know, migrating um, various things. And unfortunately that did happen to our community. But what we did is um, in doing that, when it happened, um, we said, you know, when, as soon as we realized, of course, we, we paused the contract. And unfortunately at that point, they had already drained all the liquidity, but we relaunched the following day and we airdropped every single holder, all of the tokens that, you know, they had um, bought in the original contract. So the airdrops that you see in um, this contract were actually purchased tokens in the previous contract. So that 52.5% of supply, it, they were bought tokens, yes. Um, originally, we had a 2% max supply, or max wallet um, in the contract. And because we have um, some amazing benevolent whales and, um, you know, holders in our community that, that voluntarily gave up, um, vaulted their tokens and, and such, um, we were actually able to lower that max wallet to under 1%. Um, and it wasn't, you know, for them transferring their tokens to other wallets. Um, they literally vaulted them. And so um, I haven't actually updated this website in the past week, but in addition to this, um, we actually have burned almost 67% now um, up from that 65% um, uh, in the past week, the community and then matching uh, devs have burned, not vaulted, but sent directly to the burn wallet, um, another almost 2% of supply. So, um, it, it's just like, it, it's literally insane. This community is the heart and soul of this project. And um, when DC said before that, like, you know, there's always promos and stuff going on. It, it so much of it actually comes from the community and tokens that they personally bought. And it's because they want to see, you know, the success of the project. They see the long-term goal. They see the long-term vision. Um, they bought in early. So their tokens are worth so much now that they recognize that, you know, we have less than 200 holders and it's early. So they can share some of their tokens because they know what they're worth now. And they know that, you know, as the utilities bid out in a year from now, in two years from now, what that's going to continue to be worth, you know, so they're, they're happy to do that for the growth of the project. It's really an amazing thing to see. You don't see that anywhere else. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of another project where something like this has happened. So yeah, wonderful. Props to props to your community, and uh, yeah, uh, great stuff. Thank you so much for your time and explaining all of that. All the best. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, CJ. My man came out. Always good to see him. Uh, the way we're gonna do it now, we're gonna go to. Um, we're gonna go to. Some questions in the comments. We're going to get a couple questions from the comments. Then we're going to go over to Vladling. Sujay, now, 
this is your arch nemesis right here. All right. You know, you know Vlad. All right. So we're going to get into that soon. Let's go ahead and ask. The, <laughs> let me find the question in the comments. All right. Uh, what has, okay. So Windsor Williams wants to know what has been your biggest challenge in developing your project and how were you able to solve that problem? Hmm. Um, biggest developmental challenge. Um, well, let me think. Um, I haven't had a lot of problems developmentally. Obviously, um, you know, we have we have problems from a growth standpoint, and I wouldn't say it's problems per se. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, we have less than 200 holders. Um, so, and again, that that's not a problem because much of our growth has been by design in wanting to stay organic and making sure that, um, you know, we, we kept that solid floor. So part of that's been by design, but, you know, continuing to grow and I guess find like-minded people, that's probably been the biggest challenge, ensuring that we get our word out and that people join and know what our vision is and that, you know, we have like-minded people um, in our community. That's probably been um, the biggest challenge. And the way that we're overcoming that is, you know, me out now um, doing the AMAs and spreading the word and having, you know, amazing people um, that have some influence in the space that know a lot of people in the space that are sharing that as well. Um, you know, sharing, sharing the, the telegram, sharing the promotions, sharing our vision. Um, you know, again, we're very fortunate to have those people who have been doing that. And, you know, I think once, once those people come into our community and they see what we're about and they hear it, um, you know, from me and from, from our other team members and hear, um, from our community members, you know, they're able to see that vision and they're they're able to be a part of that. You know, one of the things that you'll hear people say in our chat is that positivity breeds positivity. You know, if if you're um, if you're around positive people, you're more positive. If if you're around millionaires all the time, you're going to strive to want to be a millionaire. If you're around negative people, you'll you'll be negative. Um, so we try to keep it very positive. You know, we spread our message. We strive our we spread our vision. And so, you know, people you know, once they hear it, they believe in it. And then, you know, they strive for that as well. All right, Windsor World, there's your wonderful answer. Good answers every time, man. So let's see. Let me look at another one. Man, uh, let me see. This might be a good one. All right, so someone says, every time you will change the name of the project, you will get new publicity and keep abreast of new events. But this needs a basic, a basic basis for promotion, experts, and multiple communities to cover the promotion. So how will you do that? So I think what they're trying to ask is, you're changing the theme, but every time you change the theme, they're saying you got to market it a different type of way. And they're asking how you're going to be able to do that. Correct. So, um, you know, changing the theme is, is more about, um, you know, grabbing the attention of the people in the space. So who we are and what we do doesn't change, but having that shiny new object out there does. So, you know, we, we have our own um, community where, you know, people are able to go and, and show projects and then spread from there. Of course, we have Twitter. We have shillers um, not paid. I, I don't think I mentioned before, nobody on our team, no admins, no mods, nobody's paid. Everybody's a volunteer. So that just ensures that more funds can go back into development, into marketing, um, you know, into promotions and such. But um, we're able, you know, to to take um the the new logos the new um 
flyers that we make and, and, you know, spread those. And because it's new, because it looks new, because it's the new theme, you know, people are able to see that. We do have friends, um, you know, with call channels and such that are able, you know, to spread those things um, out to other people, um, not necessarily, you know, doing an AMA because, you know, the AMA is not necessarily for height, it's to educate. You know, it's for me to spread the word, to educate you about my project. But when we change the theme, we're able to to get those flyers out, to get the theme out so that people see, you know, oh, this is, you know, a St. Patrick's Day thing. Let's go see about it. So um, we are able to to get those out when we change um, themes, you know, through inexpensive marketing tactics. But that doesn't change the core of who we are or what we're doing in the space. All right. Great answer. Great answer. Oh, Vlad has his hand down. Is he still in here? Okay, Vlad, I'm going to use some time to get your hand back up. About 10 seconds, all right? Because I did say I would go to you. And if not, we're going to go to the last Apache. All right, there goes Vlad. All right, Vlad, let's go ahead. Let's see what you got, man. Yeah, can you hear me? You know, it's pretty weird because my hand was up. And you said my hand is down. So, yes, yeah, some kind of weird stuff with TG as usual yeah i just i'm doing good by the way because you're asked hope you too and yeah it's just you know not like uh an in-depth question but i was a bit concerned about the topic we already discussed and you know that's basically a topic all the people i think uh, ask when they first come around to project and you know like that's the stuff about uh, the market cap to liquidity ratio so you know and you already touched on that in, in this ama i remember um you know about people holding big chunks of supply even though the max wallet is one percent um there are some people uh, who hold you know like a Point twenty five percent of supply, and uh, uh, the price impact is still pretty high. It's still around thirty percent on the price because uh, the valuation of that uh, supply is uh, the part of supply is around thirty beans by now. So, yeah, and um, uh, you know, I came came across your message in um, in the tokens TG uh, when you said uh, when you actually were explaining why it won't profit a person who can hypothetically hold to one percent of the supply uh, or even 0.5 of the supply uh, why it won't benefit won't be beneficial to a person because first of all he will pay taxes then uh, the rest of his bags will go down in price and so on but uh, i was actually wondering like what if a person like holds a pretty big chunk of supply and uh, um, let's mention yeah so he transfers part of that supply to a different wallet and then he sells um you know, like with to, to those wallets, because uh, that's first of all, and uh, also, you know, just losing tr track uh, of what I was talking about a bit, because like a lot of things uh, to touch on considering this. Uh, so basically, yeah, uh, just let's make it simple. Uh, okay. Um, because I can see that's not a problem of a top top five holders and stuff but it's like a problem of all top 50 holders because each of those bags is worth around uh, you know starting with 25 bnb and more and you know if an unexperienced investor or a more experienced guy but not uh, actually much into uh, uh, the concept of the project but he sees that uh, top holders wallets, top 50 holders wallets, because each of those has pretty big price impact. And that may uh, that may create a problem for you in attracting new investors because a lot of people are just scared and it requires additional explanation, you know, to explain to each of those uh, people uh, that it's not harmful, that we are building long-term view here. So do you have uh, in a short-term period, uh, like any way that you can resolve the problem with uh, those top 50 holders and the huge price impact uh, because, uh, you know, um, 
uh, yeah, uh, maybe like uh, additional ways to fatten up the liquidity pool or, you know, to lower the uh, max, uh, max transaction percent or something like that. Uh, because uh, hypothetically, you know, 1% of supply is worth 70 BNB now and... Uh, there is no, no such holder who actually holds uh, uh, 70 BNB. I, I see that the biggest wallet like holds around uh, um, 60 or something. Uh, so yeah, um, I think you got me at this point. So do you know like how to, to, to resolve the problem with people getting scared and getting like a, a, a bit pushed away from the project when they first come around this top holders list and this uh, um, uh, market cap to liquidity ratio. I, I definitely get what you're saying. We've, um, we have, you know, been, rec we have recognized, you know, that obviously along the way and we've continued to, um, to strengthen the liquidity pool. We have um, over, 35% of the current tax structure going into the liquidity pool. So it, the ratio continues to strengthen and it will continue to strengthen. And, um, you know, obviously if you don't understand how AMMs work, that's why, again, education is so important, um, you know, in the space, understanding how um, AMMs work and the fact that you cannot take the amount of the tokens that you have right now at the current price and and know that you know the price of that the current price applied to all of your tokens is the actual value that you're going to get also you can't go to pcs and sell with a 30 percent price impact it won't let you um even if it is the max transaction a 30 percent price impact is too high to sell so um education again is very important but also we do recognize that that is scary for investors. So we are continuing to strengthen the liquidity pool and strengthen that liquidity ratio so that um, perhaps it doesn't appear so scary for new investors to come in. Now, with that said, if you look at even the top 20 coins out there, um, you know, BNB, you know, any of those things, um, the top 20 wallets are owned, um, or 90% of the supply is owned by the top 20 wallets. Um, it, you know, it, it's it's just a real thing um, in the space or the top 50 wallets. It's, um, you know, I think that you will see that continuously. I think that people check it more in this space because it, it's a little easier and people are more fearful in this space. And I recognize that. Um, but all I can continue to do is strengthen that liquidity ratio and continue to educate people in the space on our mission and through, you know, building out our utility and continuing um, to have community burns and continuing to buy back and burn the token. We will also strengthen that ratio in addition to having additional um, building of the liquidity through the tax structure. Okay, yeah, I understand that, that stuff, you know, how AMA works. And uh, yeah, you mentioned the BNB. We also you know, can mention Bitcoin because there are some holders uh, of more than 10,000 of Bitcoins. And they can create huge, huge price impact. They can create panic on the market. Yeah, for sure. Using centralized exchanges and stuff. And uh, yeah, they even can, you know, people can manipulate the, uh, the, the market. But yeah, the problem why I was interested particularly in this, because people like, everyone knows about of existence of so-called market market makers and, and so on, but the way is here how people treat a, a coin and, you know, a, a, and a, like you can compare, compare meme, meme coin to Bitcoin and, you know, there's only a thing of vision how people um, how people understand a product and how people actually um, treat a product like a long-term investor, a short-term investor investment. Uh, but yeah, and um, also like um, 
touching on the wallets, um, just interesting stuff. I was looking on some of that top 50 wallets and I see their transactions with their tokens. They're basically sending, uh, sending their tokens. Uh, so how it's, uh, um, uh, how I see that on the basis, basis can, uh, they are sending their tokens to a dead wallet. And uh, I, I don't understand, uh, how can that happen? Uh, so maybe you know, uh, or maybe voluntarily burnt their tokens. So they burn their tokens, right? Uh, but what would, why would they do that? So what the benefit for them just to burn a piece of their of their back? As a community, they burnt tokens to strengthen the liquidity ratio and to show people that they're not selling. Okay, yeah, but you know, like usually, yeah. So, like, you mean that they personally just burn? That? Okay, yeah. The, la the last part here was just interested about this uh, four percent wallet uh, currently holding uh, eighteen million tokens. Uh, it's so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but I see that on the first day. Uh, of the launch, he like proceeded to a lot of airdrops, and that's why I was basically interested about those airdrops, uh, which were sent on the first day. Some of those people already sell, sold their tokens in the first 10 days yep. after launch. But... I, mentioned, I mentioned that earlier. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. With a relaunch, I know, yeah, but uh. I know that, but, but basically, the problem is that some of uh yeah a lot of people actually who got into this um from a relaunch are now in a top 50 holders and that's why you know if they got uh, on a relatively lower price to the first token um and first to, to token version that won't won't create a problem for them to sell it back even like with a 10% price impact, and that will, will be enough to create panic as selling, and they will still have pretty good profit, especially if they split uh, their investment uh, in, into multiple wallets. You know, like they can for sure lose some part of their bag, but they will still come with a pretty good profit. So, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I just highlighting these points because I think uh, that many people are concerned about that. And, and you know, uh, me as a regular investor is concerned too. So, you know, not everyone is doing like research and stuff. But, anyways, was just interested about all, all those things. And yeah, but actually, thank you for the answers, Jess. And uh, yeah, I think that's all from me. We'll go back to, to my research and stuff. So yeah. You're welcome. And if you have any additional questions, you know, you're more than welcome to come into our Telegram. Um, I do open voice chat a lot. And I mean, the investors in our community, like I think that you would really benefit from joining the Telegram itself and speaking with some investors and, and asking them those questions. Why did they voluntarily give up their tokens? Why did they burn them? Um, and, and hearing their answers. Um, I think that, you know, obviously do your research on the blockchain, but go into the community itself because there are things that, you know, can't be answered on the blockchain that can be answered by investors. And I don't mean the team itself or, or the admins, I mean actual investors. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer too. Yeah, I already joined your your community. Actually, we'll tr maybe try to to ask some questions there uh, a bit later. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the last game, Patchy. Vlad, that was wonderful. Good job. Oh, uh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> hi, Jess. So, uh, uh, well, a uh, lot of questions were there, but I think a lot of what covered as well. Uh, something that I'm very peculiar about is the things you're doing in the Telegram about the multiple uh, multiples of the amount you are getting and everything. I hope the tokens you're giving, the extra amount, are being wasted or like uh, are directly being sent for the staking, not given in the world, like not directly given to the wallet so that they can like, dump on the 3x 
Um, so, I mean, they, they are, they're not state. Um, they're, they're people to sell, um, but they are not given all at once either. They're spread out. And if they sell, um, then they, if they sell, then, you know, they don't receive the rest of, of those things. Um, there are also stipulations that, um, there were also stipulations, you know, that they could not sell to buy back in to receive um, that promo. Um, there's a lot of stipulations on that. But also knowing that, you know, a lot of the tokens from that promo were, they came from people who had bought those tokens. So they were already bought tokens. They're not like they were just free tokens that we just gave away. So they were actually bought tokens to begin with. Um, so, yes, I mean, theoretically, they could be sold. But... You know, again, I would say to look at our chart um, and know that, you know, yes, there may be times that, um, you know, we've corrected just like every other chart has ever, but we've ran these promos time and time again. And, um, you know, the chart continues to correct like other charts and, and then reverse and do its thing. So, uh, whatever uh, what uh, DC mentioned earlier about the chart thing, uh, it is not a re- uh, not a reason behind it, right? That uh, uh, let's say a certain person got a certain big uh, airdrop, and what he was mentioning about the swings, the big greens and the big reds, uh, I was just wondering if that could be the cause or the issue of this as well. Uh, but I hope not. Uh, other thing is that uh, I think uh, some uh, I don't remember the name, the guy earlier, Ladin, I guess he mentioned about the charts and everything uh, i'm uh, curious about one thing uh, you started with the ellen thing and uh, the themes you have chosen are the ones that uh, might interest a lot of majority of the international people but as well as ellen so somewhere behind the back of your mind is there a, still a possibility that you want to be associated with the stuff that ellen might tweet or something about yeah, that that was just um you know the original theme um was Elon's Naughty Elves. We wanted to do a Christmas theme and we wanted to be different. So, um, you know, we didn't want to, you know, just be Floki or, um, you know, Christmas Doge or something different. So we, we came up with different names and that's the one we went with. Of course, we did target, you know, Elon because if you were going to name it after him, why wouldn't you? But, um, you know, we don't, we, of course, on the blockchain, it still says Elon's Naughty Elves, but you know, we have changed the name. And so on the charts and stuff and in the telegram, it's E and E and that's what we go by. So, you know, it's not, um, you know, obviously if he did, that would be fantastic, but you know, we, we are not, um, built on height. You know, obviously we do try to capture that mean market, which does have, you know, generate some hype to it, but we are building real utility, useful utility for DeFi, um, for all of DeFi, not just in the BSC. So, that's that's what we're going for. I would just I would say that uh, being uh, when you consider yourself as still in the meme section of the tokenomics and everything, uh, saying that it is uh, differs uh, well memes sort of aligns with uh, let's say not utility in a way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, thank you for answering that. Uh, but do hope to see. Uh, Something uh, related to white paper here because uh, I tried looking through the uh, chat and everything. Uh, I think because you guys are constantly changing like every couple of weeks. So you don't have a definite thing on the white paper and stuff. But I do hope uh, that we get something that a person can understand it better if given time. Uh, Thank you so much. If you go to the website, the very first section is structured as a white paper it has an introduction a problem statement and a solution as well as tokenomics that is how a white paper would be structured it's just not separated into a white paper and then a roadmap so that very first section in the website is structured as a white paper when our v2 website comes out there will actually be um, a traditional white paper on it uh, well i was there i read uh, whatever was there that was not much on it on the website uh, uh, because what was there is the basic information that about the space. Uh, the other thing I liked is that you have mentioned on the website that what is going to happen. Like there were two AMS planned and you had on the mark you on the website. That is pretty good. That it means that team is actively working on the website every day. Uh, but also if that is what the team is offering in, in terms of white paper, uh, that's really not much because uh, 
basically the uh, you could provide a basic uh, graphs for the tokenomics i think all was written in text if i remember correctly and uh, uh, it it focused basically on the uh, problems and everything but not exactly what team is currently doing or has done couple of last couple of months all right uh, i was hoping to, uh, to get something on it because uh, the reason a, a person will probably get into it is not because of the problems but for the solution and what is your solution to it uh, well that is all i had to say thank you for so much thank you thank you kim patchy let's go to Hmm. Let's get Isaac. Uh, let's get Isaac in here. All right, Isaac, go ahead with your question. We are waiting. Hello, am I audible? Sure, we can hear you. Okay. So, um, I've been listening to you very much, and I will say you really have something nice for everyone here. And I also must commend you for the efforts you've put in place in coming this far to see that you're part of the crypto space. Because it's always a thing of joy to see females get themselves actively involved on crypto space. But um, still on the vouch, you guys stated on your website and much talk have been said about it here too. I want to know, the token people contributed. I know they do it willingly on their own and voluntarily. But you stated that you will be a drop in such individuals with um, maybe projects or tokens. So I want to know, are you guys going to be a drop in them based on the number of tokens they submitted or they voted on your platform? Or will you just do it based on any amount you guys feel is okay and suitable for them? Um, it's actually... There's actually an algorithm that's being used, um, and it takes a lot of different things into account. Um, again, you know, it's a it's a potential airdrop at a zero dollar value upon receipt because it'll be done before any liquidity is added. Um, not tax advice, not financial advice, but um, the algorithm will take a lot of things into consideration. It'll take into account um, what you know, the tokens were purchased for, the amount that they were purchased for, the amount that you vaulted, the amount um, that they were worth when you vaulted, um, how long they were in the vault, you know, at what point you vaulted them. So there's a lot of different things that um, the algorithm takes into account. So it's not like just um, the same airdrop for everyone, but um, you're, it's not like you're also going to be airdropped at, you know, per se a one-to-one -one value um in in future things either and so um and that is only you know for the vault that's not for the tokens that the community you know has burnt um sent straight to the burn wallet um that's that's only for the vault and you know the vault is closed now it's not currently open um it may open again um in the future for new investors to have the opportunity to take part in it but it's been closed for a couple of weeks now um so we may open it again but it, it's not currently open Okay, okay, that's fine. The last question for me I also want to know is um, you said nobody's been paid on your platform. Everybody come voluntarily and work voluntarily. I just want to know, how do you guys like sustain the the projects apart from the income? Let's say your income revenue because you said you're not allocating any amount of token to marketing and stuff like that. So do you guys have any kind of a backup plan, like having a standard work different from this project whereby you add funds in case of any slacking down or going off the plan? Um, so, I mean, we have, we have a development and a marketing fund, but they don't pay us as individuals. Like, I mean, I'm paying the development team that's building our utility they're not volunteers, but we are volunteers. The core team, the advisors, the moderators, the admins, everyone in that respect is volunteering. But the real world developers who are full stack developers who do this every day for, for their career, they are being paid and they're being paid from development funds. Okay, okay, that's clear now. Thank you very much. Thank you, DC. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. No problem. No problem at all. 
Let me go to all righty. Me. Hmm. Let's go to mm, who's been up? Uh, coolest ape. I've seen his name for a while, so let's go to coolest ape. All right, buddy, go ahead. All right, coolest eight. I will come back to you later. Let's go to Itachi Uchiha. There you go. All righty, Itachi will give you about five more seconds. Issue with Mike. All right, just ask your question in the comments, then, buddy. Let's go to Ghost Dog. Hey, sir, how you doing, friend? Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, guys. What's up, man? Um, go ahead. Uh, congratulations on the project. Impressive market cap. Uh, Really like it. Really like the idea about changing names. It's not the first time I, I, I hear about it, but it, it, it's nice. It has potential. And my question is because, <clears throat> like, the obvious consequence of the you know changing of the name is that you you have a new name basically. So like in terms of marketing or so like social media presence and 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 like brand identity, let's say uh, this stuff keeps changing. Uh, and it is some sort of a challenge because it's it has value, you know, the, the brand recognition and and the clarity in terms of like social media presence. I, I so my my question is, how do you uh, like deal with those challenges? And and are there any like other like consequences or, or challenges um, resulting from the you know conception of of, of changing changing things? Sure. Yeah. No, I completely understand. Um, so. Um... We, we are, after that initial Elon Saudi Elves, um, once we switched to the New Year's theme, we became E&E &E 2023. We will always be E&E &E 2023. Um, I have the ability to change our ticker too, but there's no reason to do that. Our ticker is just E&E. &E. So we stay E&E &E 2023. So in terms of like who we are, we are E&E &E 2023. What we change is the theme. So prior, we were, you know, E&E &E 2023 New Year's Edition, E&E &E 2023 Year of the Rabbit, E&E &E 2023 Cupid's Crush. Now we're E&E &E 2023 Shamrocks and Shenanigans. Um, as such, on our Twitter, um, our, I believe our, our Twitter handle is E&E &E 2023 BSC. I know that's our, our Telegram space. Um, the at is E&E &E 2023 BSC. And um, our website is just E&E &E 2023. So that holds true. Um, on our V2 website, um, one of the things that, that we, will, um, we will introduce on that website is just an E&E &E 2023 branded logo so that um, we are able to keep that logo and then, you know, we will continue to have um, the themes and the things that come about with those theme changes. But um, the E&E &E brand, because branding is important, as you mentioned, um, will stay the same. And, you know, that website is a much more professionally done website. You know, as, as was mentioned earlier about the white paper, it will have a more formal white paper um, on it. Um, it will be a, a much more, um, like I said, professionally done website. I think um, people will be impressed with it, particularly people, you know, outside of the meme space um, with what we're doing, you know, the direction that we're going with it um, and, you know, the branding that we're choosing to, to follow through with that and just the E&E &E 2023 brand of it. Okay, and is it like you you revamp the the website uh, whenever a new theme kicks in? So the current website we have, um, we've changed the website overnight every time we've changed, or we've changed the website overnight as we change themes. 
everything, you know, not the wording per se, um, except for, you know, where we needed to change the the theme name, but um, the colors, the the logos, the, the imagery, we've changed that. Um, on the new website, um, there will be a space for the current theme. And um, so that space will be changed. But as I said, because it is a more um, professionally done site, it will not just center around the meme itself. It will actually, you know, be much more focused on um, the goals and the roadmap and, and the importance of the project and the space. Um, but there will be a section for the current meme and through some other things that we're doing, we're able to incorporate the current theme into the website still. Um, so that will always change with the, the current theme, but um, the, professionalism of the website itself you know that won't change all right nice thanks for for the answers I, I i i like it like when i think about it like you know instead of launching new tokens on every new occasion you kind of like capitalize on the trust of the people over time and 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 just keep it going it's it, it might work so good luck you i appreciate it good work ghost dog you did not disappoint Let's go to CC Jitters. All right, CC, go ahead, man. Your mic is unmuted and the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, one question I wanted to ask is a kind of like simple question. So according to what I, I read in your website, you said you're going to be changing your token name and theme. So in terms of trying to keep your contract secured is there a plan for you to also change, have a unique contract id now if you if you want to change your contract id it's still going to be unique so it could also prevent scammers right because i could go to uh pre-sale world i could go to jampad i could go to pink sale and then use the same name you know i i could follow every every activity you do whenever you change your name i could follow that activity and then change my name concerning that your own project and then uh, change the contract address, you know, and then put my project on Pink Seal or any other launch pads, and you know, and then it's going to be a very difficult situation to, you know, um, our, con that our contract ID doesn't change. That that's kind of the point in being able to change the name of the contract. So the contract ID is the same. So there won't be a pre-sale. Okay. So. Yeah, so anyone who, you know, is is kind of paying attention, of course, you could go and launch, you know, the same name on Pink Cell, but um, all of the, you know, Twitter handles, the Telegram handle, the, you know, anyone who does their research um, into that token that you're launching on Pink Cell, um, you know, hopefully we'll see that that's a copy. Yeah, no worries, no worries. That's a, that's a pretty good answer. So it's a good one, actually, to know, not change your contract, make it unique, like a Telegram username. So, so you know, right. So, but, but one question I, I wanted to also ask was um, another based on your Deep20 token. I was actually thinking, if you, you focused on the Deep20 token, I was thinking if you, if you had this strategy to uh, maybe peg your um, token to a stable coin since you're on, on a bearish market right now. We're expecting a bullish market anytime from now, and then you know, it's going to be hot. But what if you try to peg your token to to um, a stable coin so your token will also be stable? You know, I know that would require a lot of work, right? So I was thinking if you had that strategy in mind or part of your, because I don't think it's on your roadmap. I didn't see, see it on your roadmap. So I was thinking if that could be a possible way to make your token stable. No. So, you know, one of the, I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, there, there is a possibility that, um, the market drops more before it goes up. Um, I, I won't go into to my beliefs on, on what I think is, is the bottom and whether we've reached it or not, but that's a topic for another day. But, um, you know, I, I won't, I will leave, um, us paired with BNB because one of the, the greatest things, um, you know, about, 
um, AMMs and token pairings is that you're able to to rise with your pairs. So um, even though you know the next bull run is some time away, and even though there's been you know some fud in the market around BNB, and, and you know it, it's been a little volatile um, when it's not been overly volatile, um, and it could drop some more. Um, and if it does, you know we we will see that drop, but the drop is because of BNB. Um, and of course, BNB will reverse. Um, you know, it it's third largest market cap um, coin, and and Binance is a global powerhouse, so it's going to reverse. And um, as it reverses, we will reverse with it. Um, and in the bull run, as it increases, um, you know, we'll increase with it. So. That is one of the, you know, the greatest things about token pairs, and and that's one of the reasons we'll be taking advantage of Pulse Chain when it launches, um, is that, you know, as a new asset on a layer one, um, there's the opportunity for tremendous growth, and you know, if if Pulse, um, if you're paired with Pulse and it grows 100x, you grow 100x, you know, without your token growing at all, so. Um, you know, we'll continue to to look at um, growing to new to new blockchains and to other blockchains um, because that'll only bring further growth to ENE as well. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Well, as you said, growing to other other chains. You know, just having it available instead of pegging with them. Uh, it's a pretty good one. At least it, it still makes you um, vulnerable to a lot of people that have more interest in other chains like you know ethereum and then you know whenever we get to the bullish market those who want to buy an ethereum with your token could earn more right because you are now in ethereum so i was actually thinking about that too so anyway that's a great one it's a great one and since since you have the strategy obviously you've already it's not something you just quickly change at a blink of an eye right so yeah well done you answered my questions really really well thank you very much Thank you. I appreciate that. Good work, man. I enjoyed that. Let's go ahead and take everybody down. Now let's go to, let's go back to Itachi. All right, Itachi, go ahead and ask the question, bro. Let's see what you got. Hello, how are you? What's up, man? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, brother, I just wanted to know that. Uh, as she was mentioning about both, and then once you put in the word, you can't get them out. Once you put in your money, you can't get them out. So what if the project uh, is a failure? It doesn't succeed. It, it ends up failing. What will happen to the money in that case? Will it be returned or is it lost? Um, which money? No, these tokens that you say, you know, that we're putting in the vault. Um, um, the vault... So anything that's in the vault has been burned. It doesn't exist anymore. People vaulted uh, that no oh. it could be burned. It's it's gone. It doesn't exist. Okay, and I also wanted to know, could we make NFTs using your platform? Uh, once the cross chain NFT marketplace has been launched, you'll be able to mint and you'll be able to create and mint your own NFTs on it, yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Best of luck for your project. Yep, thank you. All righty. Um, let's go to Coolest Ape. Thank you, Itachi. That was good. Coolest hey, Ape was good. Hey, Jay. So I want to ask about the file because I read in the website that in the vault wallet, we can use for uh, the vault wallet. We can use it for the next event for the project. So my question is, if I sacrifice like one million dollars in the vault wallet, can uh, do I have the prerogative to choose what will happen with the project and what will happen with the money in the vault wallet? Thanks. Anything that is vaulted is burned. It's a sacrifice. So if you vault a million dollars worth of ENE token, you're burning it. Um, it 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 is sacrificed. It's gone because it's going to be burned. Um, 
what you get from your vault um, is the potential to have airdrops at a zero dollar value in future projects that both this team and um, part, certain partner projects launch. So um, that might include e, e on another blockchain um, if we choose to go that route um, in the way that we launch when we go to other blockchains, but it would also include the aftermath and baby pulse and other things. Um, currently the vault is closed, but we are considering opening it for a short period of time to new investors to have the opportunity to take part in that. Okay, thank you. Good job, man. Good work. My man came from out the jungle. That's where he's at. Yeah, he hiding out in the jungle, man. He's trying to get that's why his internet connection was messed up. That's why you heard all them birds in the background. My man is I undercover. Ask, is that why I hear birds in the background? Yep, my man out in the jungle. He's sitting on them palm trees looking over his shoulder. <laughs> all righty. So let's go ahead and get to um oh and Chris, I sent you a DM as well. Um Let's go ahead to let's get these last two questions and that's going to be it. All right. Let's go to nuclear nettle. All right. Let's go, brother. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nuclear nettle, are you there? All righty. Let's move on. Aviator Mania, go ahead and ask your question, brother. We are waiting on you. All right, there he is. Go ahead and hit us with the question. Go ahead. Can you hear me? There. All right. So um, I was just going through and I noticed the fact that you have an educative system. And so I just wanted to ask if you're going to be having like a multilingual um, uh, educative platform for just not just more than one, not just English based community but more than one uh community yes sir so right now um we only have um an english community um however in all of our previous um projects that we were part of we had um multiple um language project we had multiple language communities so we're familiar with setting those up and we certainly will have those available. We will help facilitate them as we continue to grow and as there's a need for it. Um, we have um, a couple of uh, native Portuguese speakers in our community now who um, have offered you know, to help facilitate that as the need grows. And um, you know, we've got some, some native um, Mandarin speakers um, you know, that can, of course, from a writing standpoint, sim um, standpoint simplified um, Chinese, but you know, as the community continues to grow and the the need is there to have um, non-native English speakers um, join and and need their own community, we will certainly um, grow those as well and help facilitate those. Oh, that's really great. That's awesome. Um, Permit me to ask just one final question. Uh, yeah, you got one. You got another question. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So during the times whereby a team is being changed, like a, a team for the pro for Eni has been changed, um, like I can see that you are using Shamarok and Shenanigans now. So during the times uh, another team is changed, does that give the opportunity to mint new tokens based on the fact that? Um, since the five percent of the tokens has already been bonded already, so does it give an opportunity to like mint a new token based on it's a new team, a new um, uh, custom, and the whole rest? No, sir. We don't have a mint function in our contract, so that initial four hundred twenty million supply was um, all that could ever be minted. There's there's no additional ability to mint new tokens. Awesome, awesome. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, DC. Thank you. 
All righty. Well, you guys, anybody else who has questions, y'all got to go to the chat, all right, because I don't want to run it too long, you know? Hey, DC, but, um, DC real quick. DC, can mm-hmm. I please take um, Tomas's question? Yeah, I think he yeah. Has to take Tomas. Yeah. All right, there you go. Go ahead. Tomas, your mic's unmuted. He might not have really meant to have his hand up, and if so, that's okay. All right. Well, anyways, yeah, that concludes the session, you guys. Uh, Like I said, great job by Jess here. Wonderful job by her. Uh, She's doing great things. E&E is great. Good to see all you guys in here. Y'all had some great questions. It's very difficult picking the best because y'all had some really good ones. Um, But yeah, you guys, we can go ahead and get into this giveaway. Uh, Jess, you got anything else you would like to say here? No. Just that, you know, thank you for having me so much. Um, I appreciated it. It's definitely, you know, one of the better AMAs that um, I've done. The questions were really great, um, and I really enjoyed it. You know, thank you for having me. And if you guys have more questions, um, you know, I would implore you to please come join our Telegram um, and ask. Um, very welcoming community. You know, come come join. Come see what we're about further. Um, we'd love to have you. Yep, yep. Dumbledore, check your DMs. But um, yeah, you guys, uh, they're doing some good things. Like-